Hey folks, welcome back to another Data Science 1 lecture. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about problems of data science at scale. So uh, this so far in the semester, uh, we've introduced uh, the all of the pieces of the data science life cycle. We've talked about uh, collecting and cleaning data. We've talked about uh, pre-processing, exploratory data analysis. Uh, we've talked about building models, how to interpret them. Uh, how to create visualizations that effectively tell your story, um, and 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 how to to bring that back to a, a stakeholder or or, uh, or someone of interest, and so taking that uh, that uh, framework all the way through, uh, we we now have the, this really nice platform to uh, to to be talking about data science projects. Um, and I, I want to uh, go back to one of our, our very first lectures and, and talk about an assumption that we made uh, about these data science platforms that, that I think is is a, a great one to take uh, for this class, um, but but that might have some issues uh, down the road in, in terms of actually applying data science. Uh, so the the uh, assumption that, that we made for a lot of this course uh, is that we'd be uh, using Python. And, and we said uh, that we're going to be using Python and pandas because uh, it's a, a really popular approach. Um, it's, it's one that, uh, that we use uh, almost exclusively in, in academia, so we're really familiar with. Um, and it allows you to uh, very quickly get projects up and running and, and to do a lot of, uh, a lot of different types of uh, of, of management of, of your data, but also exploring pipelines and, uh, and, and really quickly testing out a, a lot of, of interesting projects. And, and I think it's, it's a great learning tool. Um, and and we, we noted that, uh, that the popularity of Python and the, the tools around it are, are, are uh, you know, on the rise. Um, and that uh, for, for data scientists, it's the, the most uh, popular and most in-demand thing uh, looking at, at data science jobs. Uh, so, so we noted that, uh, that Python uh, also was related to, uh, to some of the, the specific packages, including the ones that, that we've talked about in, in this course um, uh, of demand uh, for data scientists like Pandas and, and Scikit-learn and NumPy and, and even uh, some of the deep learning frameworks like Keras or PyTorch. Um, but uh, the, the other languages that are, are nearby uh, in this ranking, so R is, is very close and we've talked about the relationship between Python and, and R, especially Pandas and R for uh, data analytics and, and that they're very similar. Uh, but in this lecture, I want to talk about the, the next few um, next few entries down. So uh, SQL uh, in particular is is the uh, the, the next most uh, asked for thing in, in data science uh, job openings uh, besides Python and R. Uh, so so what's SQL and, and what makes it uh, so appealing and, and especially so interesting for for data science at scale. Um, so SQL is a, a, a database um, language. Uh, it's, a, it's a way of dealing with, um, dealing with structured data um, in a uh, more data storage centric way than, than we've been working with in, in Python so far. Um, and there are, are many flavors of SQL uh, that, that are all uh, based around the, the same basic idea with slightly different implementations. Um, and, and different use cases. Uh, for now, we're just going to treat uh, SQL as, uh, as the, the vanilla version and, and talk about uh, kind of broad structure before we, we go into a couple uh, other uh, add-ons on top of SQL that, that we uh, don't even have in, in this slide here. So uh, your, your textbook actually uh, shows really nicely uh, the relationship between uh, uh, relational database management systems, or RDBMSs, uh, and and pandas, um, and in particular, they they uh, highlight three things. Uh, so first is that pandas uh, is totally agnostic to your your data storage, uh, and and when we talked earlier in the semester about the the breakdown of of kind of the things we teach versus a lot of the actual challenges in practical data science. Um, so much of it is in data collection and storage um, and, and pre-processing. Um, 
and and having a, a framework that is centric around the the storage of the data uh, it turns out to be really important and, and helpful at, at scale um, and, and especially when we talk about uh, about big data uh, the the way that I think about this is uh, data that's that's too big to fit on a, a single machine um, that, uh, that that this happens you know even with large research projects but uh, but absolutely at, uh, at at scale in industrial settings um, and so what you're looking at are platforms and systems that work across uh, data stored in a whole bunch of places on a, a big server farm um, in some uh, some data lake we might call it uh, so the the idea of data storage being baked into SQL uh, is 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 the the you know the main thing and the main appeal, um, and this uh, especially makes it uh, makes it great for for large data sets, uh, like I said more than uh, more than on your computer, um, and, and in particular the textbook mentions you know more than uh, than a few gigabytes, which is the uh, you know probably the RAM capacity of your average laptop. Um, but uh, but many of the approaches that, that we're going to talk about later in the lecture, you know, scale to uh, to, to much larger problems and, and data, you know, on the, the terabyte scale, uh, at least. Uh, and then the, the third thing that, that they mentioned that, that I haven't highlighted in this slide um, is just that SQL is a, a fairly simple, uh, simple language um, to, to get used to without having to learn, uh, all of the, the other things in pandas that go into starting up a project. Um, and, and we've chosen, uh, pandas and, and Python, um, because they're, uh, because they're flexible and, uh, one of the easier programming languages to, to learn. But, but as you'll see, uh, we'll look at some syntax for SQL, um, and, and note that uh, that it's it's very uh, plainly written, much the way that, that Python is, um, and it makes intuitive sense for for folks uh, as a solution to learn just for dealing with relational databases and, and pulling data in and out of them. So, uh, in particular, we'll look at the uh, the pandas documentation, which makes uh, some really nice comparisons to uh, the the SQL database. But they also have comparisons to to other languages, uh, including R, um, SAS. Uh, so, so I, I would uh, check out this uh, this link if you're interested in in seeing how syntax varies over uh, over different platforms uh, for for the same basic things we've been looking at in, in pandas this semester. Um, and uh, again, this is uh, this is uh, s supposed to just kind of uh, wet your whistle here in the lecture and, and give you an idea of, of what's out there to go look at on your own. Uh, while I'm going to talk a little bit about the relationship between uh, SQL and, and pandas, uh, we're not going to go into a lot of detail, and, and I don't expect you to know any SQL syntax. Um, coming out of this. Uh, it's just something I, I want you to be aware of so that uh, if, if you want to explore this and, and find it necessary for uh, some of the data science jobs that, that some of you may be looking at, um, I, I wanted you to, to be aware of, of the industrial uses of, of database-centric um, database machine learning pipelines because um, they're, they're so very common for, for data science and, and data analytics in industry. So uh, just to, to really quickly go over this, there's a, a handful of, um, of common functions that, that we've talked about so far in the semester um, that, uh, that we can hopefully by now very easily do in, in pandas. And just to say that, that these are things um, that, uh, that you can fairly plainly uh, do in SQL as well. Um, so, so maybe the, the simplest is just selecting a, a subset of your data. Um, this is something we'll, we'll do in, in almost every data science project is, you know, pull out, uh, pull out our, um, our individuals of interest. Um, and in this case, also uh, displaying them uh, on the screen. I, we, we won't uh, have the, the SQL printout here um, just for, uh, for sake of space for most of these examples, uh, but it, it looks, uh, you know, very, very similar to what we see here for the, the pandas output that, that we're used to. Uh, similarly, uh, searching is a, is a very uh, very common thing, uh, especially the the where clause, uh, which is is like our boolean indexing in um, in pandas, uh, which lets us uh, look at uh, at just 
uh, parts of the data frame that we're interested in, uh, you know, specifically uh, different uh, columns or, or different column values. Um, so you can see the, the, the syntax is almost exactly the same here that, that we're looking at, you know, where time equals uh, dinner um, in, in both of these. And, and in SQL, it's, it's written uh, in the, the SQL language. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, relates very closely to, to what we've seen so far in Pandas. Uh, even some of the, the more advanced things uh, that we've done in pandas like group by uh, have uh, really straightforward analogies in SQL as well. Um, I'll let you take your data frame and pull out um, pull out uh, the, the value counts uh, especially um, uh, according to, uh, to different uh, groups or subsets of your data. Uh, there are lots of ways to, to join, um, to join uh, data frames together. Um, we, we often use the concatenate or merge functions in pandas. Uh, I'm showing you just the, uh, the full join, uh, which is to say the, the outer join, uh, for, for those of you familiar with linear algebra, the, the outer product. Um, the uh, the um, inner join, which just looks at the, the overlap between the, the, the subsets or, or the union um, is, is also possible. Um, and these have dedicated functions of inner versus outer in SQL, um, where, uh, where they uh, are arguments within our merge function in pandas. Um, and, and most of the time, we'll, we'll just be doing this straightforward uh, outer merge uh, that, that uh, looks at um, the, uh, the the union of, of both data frames instead of the, the inner, which is the, the intersection. I think I mistakenly said union before. Um, here we have the, the union function. Um, so uh, so we have a, a union of, um, of these two uh, data frames, data frame one and, and data frame two. Um, and, uh, and again, uh, this is a, a fairly straightforward thing to do in, in both pandas and SQL. Uh, this is using the, the concat function rather than the, the merge function that we saw in the last slide. Um, and of course, uh, the, the thing that, that we'll often be doing is, uh, is adding entries to this, uh, this database or removing entries. Um, uh, and, and this uh, is, is very easy to do with SQL being a, a database-centric language. Um, that uh, that pushes and pulls, you know, directly to your uh, your your database uh, in in uh, in memory, um, where we're where in uh, in pandas we're doing all of this in uh, in in our variable. Um, so uh, so so those are a handful of uh, of common uh, uh, functions and their similarities and differences between the two languages. Uh, again, I, I don't need you to uh, understand or remember all of the syntax here. Um, this this isn't a class about SQL. Um, I just uh, want you to to recognize in this lecture that uh, the the options for uh, for doing data science and the things that we've learned uh, throughout this whole semester apply to uh, much broader things than just uh, just pandas and Python like we've been focusing on so far. So in, uh, in that uh, scope of thinking of uh, broader applications and, and how we think about data science at scale, uh, I, I want to look at the, uh, the, the next uh, couple entries uh, after just the, the buzzword of big data, um, which are uh, Spark and, and Hadoop. Um, so uh, as we uh, start to think more about uh, industrial data science projects, uh, you know, so much of, of what's important and, and uh, what you'll be doing uh, is, is related to software engineering and, and just, uh, you know, writing uh, good code and being able to, to interface with, with other uh, data scientists and software engineers. Um, and, and also, you know, front end people, if you're automatically collecting this data, um, or, or back end people, if if this is a, is you know a, a large project, probably will be be someone different uh, managing the database versus doing the the data science on it. Um, and so uh, so a lot of the the things that that will matter here are just good coding practices, um, and uh, and and a lot of that has to do with you know transparency and, and communication. A lot of the things that, that we've been focusing on. 
um, as, uh, as critical aspects of our data science projects so far. Uh, but, but it becomes even more important to, to be having that, uh, that, that the level of detail in the code too, instead of just, uh, just in your uh, communications and visualizations and, and data collection. So uh, a couple uh, a couple uh, frameworks uh, that uh, that are, are great for uh, software engineering at, at scale like this with data science projects. Um, uh, start with uh, Apache Spark. Uh, so this is uh, is one that uh, Olin actually mentioned uh, just a couple lectures ago about one of his favorite data science tools. Um, so uh, Spark uh, is a uh, is an analytics engine. So in that sense, it's very similar to uh, to Python and Pandas, um, in that it uh, it, it doesn't uh, in itself uh, focus uh, directly on the the SQL data frame. But as you can see in the the lower right corner here, uh, we have lots of, of functionality and modules uh, within uh, the the Spark uh, framework. Um, and specifically, Spark SQL is is what will interface with uh, a SQL database and uh, and allow you to be doing all of these things in a, a database uh, related way, uh, which which lets you do them at scale and and really fast. Um, you'll you see here uh, uh, Spark um, is is compared in this case to to Hadoop, which we haven't talked about yet, um, but uh, but creates a, a framework for doing a lot of, of analytics and and machine learning, especially at scale. Um, the uh, the ML uh, lib uh, machine learning library um, in in Spark is a, a really common one um, for for machine learning at scale um, and uh, and is you know really similar to uh, to pandas in, in the way that we uh, we uh, write our functions and in fact uh, you know uh, there there are Python implementations of Spark. Um, like uh, like you uh, actually see here in, in many other languages too, um, and, and an example of the the Python uh, data frame API, which which I think will be really familiar to uh, to, to all of you, you know, coming from a, a pandas data frame uh, background, um, that that make uh, Spark a, a great uh, uh, tool and and platform to to do data science on. Um, Olin well, also mentioned uh, GraphX uh, as as his uh, preferred uh, methodology for for using Spark. Um, so just uh, just really quick to to motivate uh, again, like uh, like our textbook mentioned, why we might want to to move from Pandas to some of these uh, platforms built on top of databases. Um, and what is that when dealing with uh, you know really large data frames, uh, pandas won't be able to handle this because it, it has to load all of it into memory um, and, and work with it in RAM for all of the operations that we're doing, um, which, uh, which make it really easy to work with, but, but not great for large distributed systems. Um, and, and in fact, uh, doing this also, uh, uh, it, doing this with uh, variables, uh, especially in, in, if you're uh, looking at interpreted Python, um, is, is, can also be a much more costly thing than if you're, you're dealing with the, the data structures and, and memory itself. Um, so, uh, so advantages of, of uh, Pandas, it, it mentions here, are a lot of the cases where, uh, where, where we've been using it so far, um, where, where we're not doing things at scale on a cluster, where we want, the, where we want uh, you know, really straightforward and flexible and, and powerful libraries to, to be able to pull in lots of functionality. And, and look at lots of different uh, types of analysis um, that, that just make it easier to implement, uh, you know, lots of different uh, exploratory and, and, uh, and, and uh, educational pipelines. Uh, but if you're doing this uh, in industry at scale, chances are you're dealing with uh, largely the same type of data and the, the same type of questions. Uh, especially if you're, you're going out and, and making uh, not just a, a prototype, but you know, a, a real uh, uh, real in the wild uh, data analytics pipeline, um, and so so that's a, a great place where uh, where, where Spark um, might hold some advantages over Pandas, um, which which haven't been the case for us so far. But uh, again, just want to make you aware that uh, that that there are uh, lots of examples of, of use cases where uh, the the implementation we've learned isn't appropriate, even if the ideas are. Um, so just to, to uh, uh, be a little bit more specific about the, the runtime and, and memory um, 
uh, requirements of, of pandas versus the, in this case, the Python implementation of Spark. Um, you can see uh, in, in this case, uh, we're, we're looking at a, a, a specific uh, uh, instance of a function that, that is, uh, is really great for uh, a database-based uh, framework where we have to look at you know, every possible value in the, the data frame to, to get a max. Um, but uh, but um, this, uh, this shows you know, some of the limitations of, of pandas. Um, probably most of you are dealing with, uh, with uh, uh, files you know, larger than 30 gigs for your projects. Um, but uh, but this is you know not uncommon to to do uh, with uh, with data science at scale. So uh, the uh, the Spark ML lib uh, framework I, I mentioned um, I, I don't want to go into to detail with. Uh, again, you can look up uh, the, the implementations themselves and especially the um, the the Python API. Uh, but I just want to say that it, you know has the the main components that we've talked about so far in pandas. Um, and, and I think will be a, a familiar and, and easy transition for, for a lot of you who, who end up wanting to, uh, to, to look at this in, in future projects or, or jobs. Um, and, uh, and again, going back to Olin's example of, uh, of GraphX uh, with Spark, um, and he, he also mentioned uh, Neo4j and, uh, and Docker. Um, as, as part of his larger pipeline. Um, and, and this gets you know, back into the idea of a lot of the good practices for data science at scale, just being good practices for uh, software engineering at scale. Um, so not only uh, you know, the, uh, the communication and, and documentation and, and APIs between pieces that I mentioned before, but uh, there are also lots of tools for uh, looking at, uh, at uh, distributed frameworks uh, across many systems and machines. Uh, like uh, encapsulating your work in Docker containers um, that, uh, that, that are uh, uh, practices that become much more important as you start to deal with, uh, with teams of, of many people and, and working on problems uh, across, uh, across many machines. Um, your, uh, your Anaconda frameworks have, uh, have some of this, uh, this uh, functionality and ideas built in. Uh, with your your conda environments, but the the Docker containers are, are an even nicer uh, encapsulation um, that that are are quite shareable and, and scalable. Um, so uh, again, not going into any detail here, but for those of you who who aren't familiar with Docker, um, it's a, a great thing to to go look up uh, if if you're interested. So I also mentioned we wanted to talk about uh, Hadoop for a second. Um, so uh, uh, Hadoop is a uh, is is less of a uh, machine learning framework um, like uh, like Spark ML Lib was, um, and, and is much more about uh, distributed file systems uh, across many machines. Uh, so this is built on uh, things like MapReduce that, that are uh, really efficient for looking at um, at parallel uh, computing and storage. Um, and so, uh, so uh, Hadoop is a, uh, a a framework that's that's really common, uh, you know, especially on the the software engineering database management side of of these large scale uh, data science projects. Um, and uh, and the uh, the Hadoop framework is is based off of the uh, Hadoop distributed file system that that you see on the bottom here, uh, which is is really what we're talking about uh, when we're talking about uh, you know. Uh, uh, structured data and, and database um, centric uh, pipelines at, at scale here, um, but uh, but the uh, the Hadoop distributed file system is a little bit more flexible than SQL, uh, where where raw SQL by itself requires structured data in in these tables and data frames the same way that we we needed them to be uh, to be you know rectangular data and data frames for pandas. Um, where uh, where Hadoop uh, the distributed file system can be a, a little bit more unstructured um, and, and still be able to parallelize really nicely uh, across larger uh, scalable frameworks um, and, uh, and and as you see in uh, the the tools that uh, that are built on top of this uh, this is not something that's uh, that is necessarily uh, opposed to things like Spark um, even though Spark does have its own uh, SQL uh, API. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, is a, is a way to, uh, to to combine these pipelines that, that have you know many 
um, many, many different uh, components and pieces, each special specialized for doing, uh, you know, distributed uh, distributed management and computation um, in, in industrial settings. Um, and, and again, I'll, I'll refer you to uh, to the software engineering class, um, and, and especially to you know best practices where, wherever you uh, you end up trying to implement these things um, for for the details on on all of these. Um, and, and just to uh, to drive home uh, the the differentiation we've been talking about here uh, today about uh, you know the the data science we've been doing in class and in larger software engineering projects in in large companies um, that uh, that the the difference is that that the data scientist um, you know deals more with with asking questions and and interrogating data and building models. Um, where the the data based uh, frameworks are are much less exploratory uh, in, in general, um, and and tend to be much more about building scalable pipelines um, that, that can deal with large amounts of data um, and and uh, you know do the the sort of data science analytics that you know you might think of in recommender systems at Netflix or Amazon. You know just to imagine the the amount of data. Um, that that are are flowing through each of their models um, as as they're uh, as they're going, um, and and as you see here, um, the, some of the the things we're talking about uh, today, like Hadoop and Spark, are are at the the interface of of uh, it, of data engineering and, and data science um, that are built on top of the the more data management uh, uh, heavy things like SQL uh, databases. And then, uh, and then you see uh, on the the data science side things like uh, like pandas and, um, and 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 Python more generally, as well as you know many of the other uh, languages that, that you're familiar with R and, and Julia and um, and and uh, uh, MATLAB for some of you um, are 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 much more on the uh, you know quick and flexible. Um, uh, side of, of this equation, which is is uh, where I certainly have the most experience, um, and uh, and and can uh, can can talk about the uh, the advantages of of these nimble frameworks in small projects and especially uh, in in academics where where we're really trying to do exploratory science and and I, I can speak much less about uh, about dealing with uh, these uh, these problems at, at scale with with data engineering. So just to uh, to wrap up here, um, I, I wanted to uh, to expose you to uh, a few other frameworks just to introduce the the idea of doing data science at scale and some of the tools that, that you might want to uh, be familiar with or at least be able to to talk about in job interviews if you're looking at doing data science uh, at at large companies. Um, good, uh, re really good interview prep to to know your basics. Um, and, uh, and and especially uh, if it's it's something you're serious about, you know, doing small uh, small projects um, in in Spark or or in SQL um, uh, yourself, uh, and, and having those, you know, in in your uh, in your uh, your uh, your GitHub or or in your portfolio um, is, is is really nice. Um, and you'll you'll see that listed for for lots of data science jobs as as we saw on the the infographic at the beginning of the lecture. Um, and, and these are great for uh, for industrial large scale settings, um, whereas the the tools we've been talking about in class so far are are great for for learning and research and and flexibility and rapid prototyping, which is uh, is all the things we've been uh, focused on so far in in uh, in, in this uh, semester and in this course. Um, but uh, but I wanted you to, to know about uh, uh, SQL-based uh, pipelines and especially uh, uh, some of the examples like uh, like Spark and Hadoop that are uh, are specific uh, specific pipelines um, based off of, of relational databases um, that, uh, that that are, are good things for, for you to know. Um, and uh, I, I'm happy to uh, to talk more about any of these uh, in lecture. Uh, though I I will uh, repeat that this is is not my area of expertise. I'm uh, very much a a machine learning um, a academic um, that uh, that I'm interested in in developing new algorithms um, and, and doing very exploratory science. 
Um, so, uh, so in, in general, I, I turn you to, uh, to, to more experienced, uh, data scientists in, in industry for this, but, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to chat, uh, about these sort of questions, um, in, uh, in our synchronous session, uh, next class. Uh, so until then, uh, have a good one and we'll, uh, see you online.